Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Bannon or Airspeed Prime here. I'm the site super moderator for Avatar the Last Airbender Online.com and I'm here today to bring you the third edition of Airspeed Discusses. Um, and before that, I I might as well say, I've kind of changed location for this one. Uh, I, the previous two were done in my room, this is done in the living room. Uh, no reason in particular, just wanted to try something a bit different. Uh, and before I get into the topic, just two things to say. Um, the first thing being that video response I got to the last episode from Atri uh, in relation to the last airspeed discusses. Um, that is the kind of definition of the thing I'm looking for in video responses to my uh, videos. If you are looking to do one yourself, kind of look to his video for kind of how to go about doing them. He brought up points of his own, discussed some of the points I made, and just really, really added to this discussion about the topic. The second thing is that on the site, uh, we have a thing called Avatar Trivia and every Christmas we do a really special edition probably like the most kind of most fun and kind of with the hardest questions most difficult questions and it's Avatar Christmas Trivia 2 because we did it last Christmas as well so I, I'm doing the questions obviously I make the questions as hard as possible so if you're not a member of the site Avatar of Last Airbender Online.com I highly recommend uh, signing up for it um, because it's a great community and it would be a great way to introduce yourself to the community doing such like a fun kind of thing testing your avatar knowledge if you are already a member why aren't you signed up already that's the big question and uh with it, i guess it's time to get into the topic now and that is basically going to be the core leaks that we had over the past like two three days and <laughs> how kind of Nick, Viacom and the creators are reacting to this leak and also the fans. Um, I'm going to start by discussing each um, thing. There's, there's three things that were released. The opening is one. The second one was the clip of Korra and the third one was a kind of a video slideshow of some of the, some of the uh, some screenshots from episode one. All of this is from episode one. So the first thing is was the opening of course and uh, that was the first thing to leak before we knew it was actually leaked as such. So I really, really enjoyed the leak. It was amazing to see the, the first bit of core news since San Diego Comic Con, which I'll mention again when I get into uh, my thing about the reaction. Uh, I love the way that they kept um, the kind of core of the opening of um, Avatar The Last Airbender and um, the way it was narrated, the way they kept the kind of uh, four elements thing at the start, but changed it up a bit. Um, we know in Avatar The Last Airbender that the um, four benders representing the uh, elements were uh, Sood, um, Avatar Roku's uh, earthbending teacher, Azula, uh, Aang and Paku. In this one it was uh, Kyoshi, Roku, Korra and uh, Aang I believe. It was an older Aang with a beard I think. If it wasn't Aang, I assume it's kind of like a younger Tenzin, but I think everyone is pretty sure it's Aang. Because uh, just seeing a younger Tenzin in the opening would just be a kind of weird thing. So that's interesting that Aang is the only kind of character that remains from the opening of uh, 1 to this core show. Uh, then I'm just going to to go through some of the points I made, and I, I've already posted them on the site, but uh, not everyone has uh, heard them. Um, we, s we see that the title has gone back to Avatar Legend of Korra. Now, this may be just because it was leaked, and uh, it's just an early kind of version of the episode. They haven't yet changed it to The Last Airbender Legend of Korra, because that's what was on all the kind of merchandise that came out of the show. That was what was, what was on the, the, the poster. That was what was on the, uh, the official trailer we got, which is official from SDCC. So, as far as we know, that is the name of the show, and this is probably an earlier version before they changed it, which is probably why they are so trying so hard to stop the leak kind of spreading around. Um, uh, we hear some of the core music for the first time. It's not kind of uh, as present as much in the opening as it is in the other kind of uh, video we got, but it's still there a bit, and I'll talk about the core music later. Um, we hear J.K. Simmons' voice tension, which is the first time really, apart from P.J. Byrne high-pitched Avatar <laughs> from uh, the official trailer, and I am loving the voice that he's doing because 
I only know really J.K. Simmons from the kind of uh, Spider-Man movies, and uh, as far as I can tell, he is actually doing a voice for Tenson, not just his regular voice. And I love the the kind of authority to it, but it also has that um, kind of spiritual style. It's, it's a bit kind of like Iroh's voice. Uh, obviously, no, no one can really capture Mako's voice, but it's the same sort of style, if you get what I mean. Uh, I, I love the, the way this... I presume this opening is specific to the first episode, because there's no mention of Core yet. Uh, as we know, the opening that we got leads uh, into the episode, the, the episode t title cue, and the first few seconds of the episode were included. Uh, so, th I, just, I assume this is exclusive to the first episode. And like Avatar Lost Everyone, there's an extended bit, so we see Tenzin talking about Aang, his father, and I like the way he said, um, my father told me stories about how him and his friends ended the Hundred Year War. And you can hear the kind of pr proudness, if that's even a word, pride in his voice for his father and the kind of honour. And as we know from the other thing, Tendon is the, the spiritual guy. So, especially the lines that he says there, like, like the changing of the uh, seasons, the Avatar cycle begins anew. That was... An amazing line. I probably like butchered the actual wording of it, but you get the point, I think. Uh, the next thing I have here, I'm just reading it off my post on the forum. Uh, they're linking into the promise. The colonies are brought together to form a new nation, the United Republic, with its capital city, Republic City. That's the Fire Nation colonies. We know this from the promise, we can just presume it, and because Dark Horse mentioned it in the uh, description basically for The Promise. Uh, so that's not a spoiler as such. Um, uh, we get a location on the United Republic where it is because the map the zooms in. Um, as from uh, It's located in the Earth Kingdom uh, but I suppose it's not the Earth Kingdom anymore, it is the United Republic but the former Earth Kingdom place. Uh, the, the place we know about that it's closest to is uh, Makapu village, uh, the village in the fortune tale episode with Aunt Wu. Um, that's just a little interesting thing to know. It's kind of built in the bay there. Um, the last thing I have to say before I get into like animation and stuff is Core, from the title kind of kind of thing, we know that Core will be done in books. Book one is called Air, and the episode one is called Welcome to Republic City, um, which is a very kind of simplistic name, uh, but it gets the kind of job done. Uh, which it really brings up the point: What will book two be called? My, uh, I, I, my guess is that it's might maybe called something like book two balance, maybe just book two avatar or something like that. Um, uh, and then it, before I go on to the next thing, which is the clip, uh, I just want to talk about the about the animation, just from the opening bit of like uh, Tendon saying like Earth, you know, Earth, Earth, you know, air, fire water, uh, the elements, and we've seen the, uh, them, each of the characters that I mentioned, doing a bit of bending. You can see how more, how much more fluid the animation is, and the best way to kind of show yourself this is to watch the trailer, then go back to like episode 101, The Boy in the Iceberg, there's a massive difference in just the quality of the animation. It's Studio Mirror, the animation studio for Core, are doing an amazing job from what we've seen. Um, and that's really all there is to talk about the uh, the opening. So I suppose I'm going to talk about the Cora clip and the uh, slideshow. So I'm going to put in a spoiler warning here, just in case people are uh, concerned with spoilers. I don't think that there's any spoilers in the opening, really, but there may be spoilers in these. So stop the video here. I'll, I'll put in a time. In the description, I'll put in a time cue thing of uh, where I'm, I'm going to stop talking about spoilers, and I'll get into my uh, thoughts on the reaction of like <laughs> Nick, Viacom, Mike to this leak. Um, so the core opening, the, no, the core clip, I mean, of uh, the person who got the episode, he got the full, he or she, I don't know, got the full episode, and rightly so is not posting the full episode online because I think that's taking it too far. That is. Um, leaking too much. Leaking the opening, a little clip introducing us to Korra and a few 
screenshots is pretty much perfect in my opinion. It, it, it's a perfect preview for the series, given that we haven't had anything since San Diego Comic Con. Um, the clip itself is uh, Cora uh, f you f kind of finishing up her final kind of firebending test to say, like her masters to say, she's mastered firebending. So she she easily beats the guy she's uh, aspiring with, and we see that um, those suits that they're wearing are probably uh, are pretty much uh, kind of fire resistance suits, so they don't get like burned. And um, so we see she easily beats the guy, and we see her amazing skill at bending, her kind of acrobatic skill, and we get her per what her personality is perfectly here, in that. What uh, I believe her fire, her, it is her fire bending master says to her is that you know you excel at the physical side of bending, but you are not good at the spiritual side, and that is a really interesting aspect for a character, with, especially compared to Ang, who really got the spiritual side of things, struggled a little bit with the physical side. So this will be interesting to see, especially since, as we later find out. Tenzin is the spiritual guy. She's kind of like um, so excited to learn airbending that she's kind of just like, I'll learn all the spiritual stuff from him along with airbending. And uh, that's her character. She is kind of like that enthusiastic, really kind of upbeat. She's like, she loves that physical side of airbending, uh, just kind of, I guess, uh, what, what kind of how like fans feel about the bending. It's awesome in that sort of way, like shooting fire out of your hands, like shooting wind out of your hands. That sort of thing, moving water. <laughs> That's kind of like she's a, she's a bending fanboy and that fangirl in that way. <laughs> and um, what else to say about that? Uh, we get to see older Katara, and I, when I when I heard them say Master Katara, and I kind of saw that, it was like, oh my god, she's alive! Simply because uh, we, as far as we knew before this, uh, all most all the uh, Avatar and Lost Evening characters were like had passed on by this time. We got that from Andrea Romano over a year ago, I, I believe. Um, and uh, So yeah, it, it was really weird kind of seeing Katara older. It was just like, cause, simply because of the massive gap that we don't see of her. We see, we see a flashback to her younger, we see her wait, as she is in the series as 14. We see her a bit, we've seen bits of her in The Promise as uh, like kind of 15, 16, uh, but seeing her here at um, what age would she be, she would be 66 plus 2, 68 plus 17 is, so I think 85 if I did that, if I did my maths correctly, uh, yeah she, sh she should be 85 I think as we see her. Um, it was so. It was just kind of weird seeing because we haven't seen basically her in like seventy years, and uh, the resemblance to like Grand Grand was uh, startling. And just the way she uh, mentions Tenzin in kind of like, if Tenzin, if anyone could teach Korra how to be uh, spiritual, it's Tenzin. I, I kind of love that reference to her son that way, and. Uh, you know, we get to see the, the other people watching over Korra's training were uh, like three members of the Order of the White Lotus. Again, we don't know who they are. I'm going to presume that uh, older Katara is voiced possibly by Eve Marie Saint. Eva Marie Saint. Simply because that is the, she's the only female voice actor that we know is confirmed as working on the show and um, is doesn't have a character yet. So. This is kind of a little bit of a spoiler or reveal that Katara is still alive, so maybe that's why we didn't, they didn't say who she is voicing. And as for the other characters, uh, we don't really know who who is voicing them yet. Um, again, you know, we know Richard Epcar, we know Robert Paulson, but those voice actors, you know, they can do so many things with their voice, so it's like impossible to tell unless you see the credits really. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. I I think the woohoo from uh, 
Cora when she said when they say that uh, she can go and learn from Tenzin now. <laughs> Tells you everything you need to know about it. Just enthusiastic to learn some new fighting skills. And uh, so then moving on to the uh, kind of screenshot uh, video of kind of clips that we got. Um, again, a lot of them are just uh, kind of clips that we've seen bits of in the core clip from uh, the trailer. But we get confirmation now based on what we know from the, what the opening of, uh, as I'm going to refer to it, KO1, Korra Episode 1, uh, is going to be that um, those three people kind of walking up uh, the kind of blizzard mountain are coming to, to the Southern Water Tribe to uh, basically see the new avatar, which is Korra. And this is where the five year old flashback, the, the flashback to five year old Korra comes in who will be voiced by Cora Baker, uh, Dee Bradley Baker's daughter. Um, that's where that she comes in. So we get to see pretty much the big discovery of the Avatar in that way, I assume. Um, and uh, five-year-old Cora is like so cute though. The way you can see her just do earth bending with the kind of not amazing technique but you can see that she knows kind of how to control a little bit so that's really cool and um, we get to see uh, Cora's parents which is uh, interesting again uh, we know Water Tribe uh, people uh, really care a lot about family so getting to see them will be really cool um, I think what, probably the most uh, important part that we see in these uh, Kind of screenshots is um, Tenzin and his family coming to meet Katara. Their uh, well, the basically Katara meeting her grandkids again, or them coming to visit her. So that that is going to be an amazing kind of moment. It's it's just going to be really weird when we actually kind of see that uh, shot in motion, co giving that you know we haven't when we last saw Katara, it'll be pretty much in the promise when she was like sixteen. So it'll be so weird seeing her with her grandchildren, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we see that Pema is uh, pretty much pretty heavily pregnant. So the fortune teller's uh, prediction. Let me just—I just need to look up the uh, what was actually said in the fortune teller episode. Then you'll have your third great grandchild before quietly passing away in your sleep. Great grandchild. So that would mean that probably Katara's and Anang's oldest uh, kid have had their kids have had kids. That would have to that would have to mean so that pretty much. Uh, Leaves out that being related to Tenzin, and if we do actually see the uh, Katara die in the series, that would have to we have to see uh, her other children. So that'd be that's gonna really uh, make their introduction interesting. Because as we know, Aunt Wu is pretty much correct with everything <laughs> she says. She hasn't got got one wrong yet. It's a third great grandchild. So we see that. Uh, I suppose technically Milo would be her, well, te her third grandchild from Tenzin. The fourth one would be coming, and yeah, so it would have to be one of the other older kids, since we know Tenzin is the y their youngest uh, child. Um, <coughs> uh, <coughs> as for the other um, screenshots, again, there's not much to say. We see Cor getting her hair pulled pretty. Uh, Violently, actually, it's like they uh, was the metal bending cops. They're kind of metal, uh, metal kind of whip things wrap around her uh, ponytail and uh, pull her back. It's really uh, painful. <coughs> um, I think that's that's pretty much all I have to say with regards to the stuff, the content of all the stuff. It's amazing to see the advancement in animation going from. 
the start of Avatar The Last Airbender to like what uh, the start of Korra here. Um, I cannot wait to see the promised comics now even more, just to see how we get from what's presented to us in the start of the promised part one to the formation of United Republic, Republic City. Um, it, ma it makes that, that even more exciting to get part one in part one in uh, January 25th, part two May 30th and then part three in like August or July I presume. Uh, so obviously the spoilers have pretty much ended here and I'm going to talk now about reaction to this uh, coming out, this being leaked. First of all from the fandom, uh, all I've seen is uh, nothing but people just people going all foamy over this thing. People going absolutely nuts. People had to like step back, just take it all in and then come back and give their thoughts on it. Just Nothing but positivity I've seen towards this. Um, uh, people love the opening. Uh, I, all I've seen is positivity towards Korra's personality and her character. Uh, the amount of Oz towards them. Um, <laughs> the um, kind of Katara meeting her grandchildren, baby Korra, and stuff like that. Uh, so the fans loving it, and it's really made the fandom a lot more active recently because it, it has kind of like gone down a bit Just because we haven't had any core news since SDCC 2011 as I said um, so now on to how, how basically Nick, Viacom, uh, Mike I'm not sure about Brian uh, have uh, handled uh, this leak pretty much as soon as the morning after the opening went up uh, Johan Matt on DeviantArt, who is uh, Rough Tunes on DeviantArt, uh, she is a comic book artist for The Lost Adventures. She did uh, stories like, Divi I think I believe she did Divided We Fall and other ones like that. Um, she posted on her DeviantArt and pretty much every, every social media that she's on that uh, the opening is pirated. Um, and that Mike has requested that uh, anyone kind of related to the show who posted it take it down and that they tell fans to take it down too, not to make it spread. And, uh, you know, that that's quite, you know, that's reasonable. I, From what I've seen, yeah, everyone has taken the videos down. You know, the site, our site, Avatar the Lost Airbender Online.com, yeah, the admin, uh, Jordan, he, uh, took the video down pretty much as soon as he heard that um, and pretty much we haven't linked to it since then uh, this, we haven't posted about it on the Facebook page and I think a lot of Facebook pages are doing that a lot of sites are doing the same no more kind of links to any of these things um, I guess my problem would be that uh, I think Johan Matt she uh, I'm not sure she didn't really quote Mike that well she didn't make a big definition between what she was saying and what he was saying but one of them says like wait for official like news and videos and I have like a response to this I it's kind of quite annoying here uh, I have to question the use of the word official because where do Avatar fans find official information from Ni the Nickelodeon website just off topic for a second uh, I do not like the fact that uh, <laughs> Nickelodeon is kind of broken up into various different websites rather than it just being the same website in the various languages so for instance I'm from Ireland so I cannot go to the nick.com website so when they posted the San Diego Comic Con trailer I couldn't see if it was someone put it up on YouTube uh, that's one of the kind of problems I have with uh, Nickelodeon now, they don't, nick.com is probably the best of the Nickelodeon sites from what I've seen they do not post uh, really uh, any information on kind of upcoming shows there. Uh, there is really no official way to for them to put out information. Um, the only official place I've seen is that they have an official The Last of the Legend of Korra uh, Facebook page. And all they have ever done on that is put up uh, links to the all the uh, kind of second-hand information things like uh, interviews like with Wall Street Journal and so on. 
and then post the video of the uh, trailer over and over again. Uh, which brings up my main point in that Nick and um, I don't know where should I I guess Mike and Brian in, in a sort of way but mainly Nick do not really know how to communicate properly with the fans um, Mike and Brian well know and I hope Nick do that how intense and into the show and just how much people want to see the show and want it to succeed from the fans, how they feel that way. And, um, you know, at San Diego Comic Con 2011, Mike and Brian at the panel, they, they even said that like creators from other shows had like come up to them, complimenting them on like how intense Avatar fans are about Avatar. And that pretty much tells you it all. And again, coming back to my, the main kind of problem I have is that they have no way to release official information to us, so them saying to wait for it, them saying to wait for it and not kind of say, like, there's any coming soon, like, how long do they expect us to wait? It's, it has pretty much been almost six months, five or six months since San Diego Comic Con, and we've had, like, barely any information on Korra since then. Just completely dark from, like, specifically kind of Mike and Brian. We've had a little bit from Sifu Kisu, a little bit from the track team, but not much. So, in a way, I sort of feel like the leak, uh, the fans kind of deserve to get to them, this information that we've got from the leak, and uh, it kind of, Nick kind of deserves to have it happen to them, that it kind of leaked out. Um, it all kind of pretty much could have been prevented if they had, you know, seen that the opening kind of came out, they should have kind of jumped on that and say like okay we'll put out like super high definition version of the opening that way you kind of stop the kind of leaks happening because there's official stuff out there and I think that's what they need to do jump on the fact that people have been super into this uh, all this leaked stuff like um, the video before Viacom took it down of the opening had when I last checked, it had 120,000 views, uh, uh, 1,500 comments, and like 1,000 likes, and like a few dislikes because YouTube's random like that, and people just randomly dislike videos. Um, uh, so yeah, and then there was pretty much a race then after the original kind of video went down. The person then up re uploaded it and it again got really high views. And then loads of other people started uploading it and the other videos that the person put out, the clips and the slideshows. And then it was effectively a race between Vi uh, people uploading them and Viacom taking them down. And from what I could tell, like the video went up, got about a thousand views, was taken down, and that kept happening over and over again. Uh, so this has been super popular, not just in terms of Avatar, but overall it like it was kind of trending kind of on YouTube it was on the front page if you just kind of look logged onto YouTube it was kind of entertainment last hour in the opening it was like the top thing and um, so in terms of that nothing negative has come out regarding this leak um, the only negative thing is that Nick pretty much somehow it leaked from Nick that's the only ne negative thing uh, it's been all positive uh, we did not get the full episode, the person is not going to put up the full episode because that is just, I think that's gone too far, putting up the full thing. But we've got a nice preview of like, we've got the opening, a nice intro into Core as a character, and a kind of link into the old series through Katara, and I think that is a that is the perfect kind of thing to get after such a long break between news. Um, so, yeah, I completely agree with them telling fan sites, like, people to stop kind of spreading this around the place. I think it has sort of calmed down a lot now. People know, like, if they just Google, they'll find it, so there's no need to keep linking around the place to find it. Um, but how kind of Nick responds to this in terms of the next time official... Uh, "Quote unquote official uh, information comes out. Uh, 
is going to be kind of crucial and what they put out. Um, so that, that's pretty much all I have to say on this. You know, uh, I've been quite harsh on Nick, and I think sort of rightly so, in that they do not communicate well with the fans at all. Um, they need. I think there really needs to be a official avatar website, like say Star Wars has StarWars.com, a place where they can put out all the information themselves officially, which pretty much negates the need for leaks because they they'll be putting stuff constantly out themselves. There needs to be like Avatar.com or something like that. I, that URL is probably taken, but something like that. Um, you know. And they need to communicate better with like the fans, especially the kind of really hardcore fans, like on fan sites. So I've noticed this thing recently with uh, one of the kind of shows that have recently just come out, uh, the new Thundercats cartoon. Fan sites there get contacted by I, I believe it's the creators or Cartoon Network. I'm not sure, and they are give the fan sites are given like the preview uh, images and trailers of the episode before they air, and. Um, and that allows the fans to see it before, rather than it leaking, rather than leaking out. So I, I hope Nick kind of adopt a similar kind of approach in that way. I'm not sure how they'll do it, simply because Nick is a completely different type of uh, kind of kids channel in a way to Cartoon Network. In that Avatar is their only kind of uh, serialized show that they have, while the like, Cartoon Network has stuff like. I believe Cartoon Network show. No, no, they, they show they have Thundercats. They show uh, Transformers Prime. They show Star Wars: The Clone Wars. All kind of serialized shows, so they know how to handle those type of things. While Nick have stuff like iCarly um, and SpongeBob, and I really do not think there are kind of super hardcore fans of those shows who are dying to see a kind of leaked preview image of those kind of episode, those uh, shows new seasons and th that's sort of an exclusive thing to kind of serialized shows that have these really intense fans and Nick really need to kind of realize that and kind of get their act together in terms of communicating with the fans, fan sites and that's pretty much all I have to say on the topic so that has been SB Discusses um, uh, number three. Uh, please uh, respond to this with a video response if you can. That would probably be the best way to do it since there is kind of a lot to discuss and you, the YouTube character limit is kind of dreadful. You can't say anything really. Uh, and as I said, uh, Atri's vi video response was great. So kind of discussion on this would be really cool to see but comments would be great too and posts on the site this thread for SB discussion on the site would be also great so uh, thank you and bye